Welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and this is my Rottweiler Capitan. Of course, I can't forget the whole other crew as well. We're just a small family living in California that love to share our daily vlogs along with some tips and tricks on how I like to care for my animals. If you want to be part of the crew, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel or if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Mary. Obviously by today's title, we are here to talk a little bit about the world's cutest frog. And I know that's kind of a bold statement because I mean the Pac-Man frog's adorable. The pixie frog is absolutely adorable. But you guys, I have fallen completely head over heels in love with my chubby frog. I mean, even the name is adorable, a chubby frog. I've just seen a lot of people in the community uh, purchase these guys and I decided why not do a care guide and kind of give you guys like a spiel on my personal experience owning a chubby frog. I've had Buddha for about two years now so this is based basically off of my experience. I did do a lot of research and I want to give you guys some cool facts about these frogs but yeah, I want to say a disclaimer, if you are planning on getting one of these frogs, please do more research beyond this video because I am not a professional. I'm just dating some facts and like I said, my personal opinion and any problems I had owning a chubby frog. So had to get that out of the way. I also do want to say if you are new to this channel, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I do post at least once a week on the critters or of course my Rottweiler Capitan. So yeah, if you wanna be part of the crew, hit that subscribe button and let's jump in to this video, why don't we? When I was doing research on the Chubby Frog, they had so many other names. I found seven of them. I'm probably missing about like five others, but the names that came up when looking at these frogs was the Asian Painted Frog, the Banded Frog, the Malaysian Frog, the Rice Frog, the Bubble Frog, the Burmese frog, and of course, I think the best name ever, the chubby frog. So yeah, when you are doing research on these frogs, there's a whole bunch of different names when it comes to them, but I just think chubby frog fits them absolutely perfect. These guys do originally come from Southeast Asia, Malaysia, and Thailand, so you can imagine that they really like that tropical, hot, humid weather. They are typically found near like grassy areas where it's gonna be close to standing water just because these guys really do love to get a nice soak, but they also will be hiding most of the day time in the grass and the nighttime they'll come out and explore. Typically when I do my research on any animal, I like to discover where they originally come from. That way I can mimic their habitat as best as possible as they would in the nature. So obviously Asia, Southeast Asia, Thailand, very tropical, hot, which is what these guys mainly like. Okay, so let's talk about the lifespan of the chubby frog. Unlike the tomato frogs, they do live around seven years. These guys have a lifespan of 10 years. These are known to be a little bit more of a hardy frog compared to your Pac-Man frogs. That was just when I was doing research that they are a little bit more tolerable than other frogs would be. But these guys do have a very long lifespan, which I personally love because I do get very close with my animals. And 10 years is a lot of time with an animal. So I'm super happy that they do have that long lifespan, but that is just something to always think about in the future. Um, you can have this frog for 10 years of your life. So always think about that before purchasing an animal. Of course, with proper house surgery, lighting, heat, all that, you will get a very healthy chubby frog that will live for 10 years. So that is, I think, a very much a big positive when it comes to these frogs. Like most amphibians, they are very sensitive when it comes to handling them. And these guys will let you know when they are stressed. They actually just blow up even more like a balloon. And they just basically are like, yo, back off. I don't want you to be around. Let's say you do pick them up and they really are not feeling your vibe. They will release a sticky like residue on your hands that they will release off of their body. It won't do you any harm. You're not gonna break out in a rash, but they're basically telling you, yo, I don't want you around. And I would suggest you just wash your hands immediately. I think if you know, you licked your hands. I don't know why would you would lick your hand off your frog, but let's say you forget to wash your hands and you eat something. I'm sure that could get you a little bit sick, but not like deathly. These frogs aren't poisonous frogs, but they will let you know, hey, I don't like your vibe, back it off. So they will release that type of sticky glue. 
Some people like to use gloves with their frogs, and I definitely was one of those people back in the day. If you have Pac-Man frogs, pretty much like any frog, take them out, they get a little, ner little nervous, they will pee on you. Back in the day, I just thought that was, ugh. Having my frog pee all over my hand, I thought it was the most unsanitary thing ever, until I did more research thinking, are gloves even okay for frogs? So doing research, there are some gloves that are very dangerous to frogs. So I want you guys to be aware of that. I had no idea. You really want to avoid any gloves that have like a powder in it. Um, those are usually like painting gloves and any latex gloves are always bad uh, for frogs. I guess they are very sensitive to that. So you might be thinking I'm wearing a glove to avoid hurting my frog because you might have oils on it, but at the end of the day, a glove could be very toxic to a frog as well. So just make sure you do your research if you are using gloves when handling your frog. But at the end of the day, you really shouldn't be handling frogs. Um, they're definitely more of an observant animal. They don't want to be handled. You scare the crap out of them. You're a big person. Let them be. Let them live their lives in their tank. Yes, it is okay to grab them and, you know, do health checks, take them out when you have to clean their enclosure. But yeah, these guys really are just more to be observed with and look at. So, I mean, if this is definitely not a pet that like you can cuddle up with, like let's say a bearded dragon, I'm sure most of you guys know that, but some of you guys might think that a frog likes to be around. They don't. This opinion is only to take your frogs out when needed you know, don't stress them out because they will really get affected by that. I'm going to talk about the size of these frogs. Unlike the pixie frog or bullfrog, which gets the size of a dinner plate at one point in their life, the chubby frog will always stay around two to four inches, which in the long run is nice because you're never going to have to have like an 80 gallon tank for them. These guys are going to stay relatively small in a way. Um, obviously they will be very round, robust, chunky guys with cute little limbs and hands. I just think they have like such a personality, derpy little faces. They have eyelids that open and close. So you can actually tell when they're sleeping. Unlike my pack frog, pa unlike my Pac-Man frog, I'm always like, yo bro, are you awake? Are you asleep? Cause his eyelids are always open. Uh, but with these chubby frogs, they are so cute with their little hands. They're like little alien hands and the cutest little derpiest faces. So I feel like out of all the frogs, these guys definitely have the most like characteristic, like cartoon like face. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but they're just freaking adorable. And typically these guys are always going to be a tan and a dark brown color. And to tell a female from a male, uh, the male typically does have a darker brown throat, which is what Buddha definitely has. So that is pretty much the only way to distinguish a male from female. So another thing to really think about before purchasing one of these frogs is that they are nocturnal. I rarely ever see this guy out in the daytime, but come night, that guy is hopping all over the place. So they are very active, but only at nighttime. So for some people, who are not up late, they'll never see them and they'll be like, is my frog even alive? But around like 9.30, this guy starts popping out and starts hunting. He uses literally every square inch of his 20 gallon long enclosure. He's always soaking, climbing on all of his cork, using all of his hides. I'll get into more detail about his tank, but yeah, very active at nighttime, which is makes it really fun on like the Pac-Man frog who's always in one spot all the time. This guy is all over the place, which makes, which makes it a lot of fun to watch. Let's discuss what kind of tank I have Buddha in. Currently he is in this 20 gallon long glass tank with a lid on it. I do, I do think that a 20 gallon is the absolute minimum for these frogs, I definitely would love to have a 40 gallon for him just because I noticed how big he's gotten within the last two years. And he uses every square inch, every square inch of that tank like I've already told you. So I definitely am planning on getting him a 40 gallon with a lot bigger of a water area because these frogs really do take advantage of a soaking water area. So I'm definitely planning on getting him a 40 gallon with lots of trees and uh, yeah, take full advantage. But for right now this 20 is working, but like I said, that's an absolute minimum. And I do want to say, like I said, these guys love to climb. You absolutely have to have a lid on them because they will go missing. And yeah, amphibians can't live very long without moisture. So 
make sure you definitely have a lid for them because these guys got hops. <laughs> so when it comes to misting, I mist them every day, two times a day, once lightly in the morning and then a very heavy mist at night because that's when I know he will be out. I do keep his humidity to 50 to 80 and then his temperature will be 75 to 80. I do keep just a belly heat pad underneath. Um, of course, he would benefit from a UVB, but I just really don't know if he would use it because he's never out in the daytime. But I usually just have like this little grow strip on the top right there that gives him some daylight that works fine. But yeah, the belly, the belly heating pad has been working just great for us. We have three different coconut little hides in there for him, which he is always using. I have one warm side, one cool side, and then one medium side hide one huge a large water bowl and then of course i have some thick substrate in there because these guys do love to bear burrow um i'm currently just using cocoa earth cocoa earth cocoa fiber cocoa earth but you can use topsoil you just have to make sure that it is organic and it has no perlite just because you are using a frog they are very sensitive to any type of crap in some kind of you know special garden dirt so just make sure it is organic and you'll be fine but i'm using the cocoa fiber for right now and that's fine but i probably eventually will switch them off to topsoil because that's a lot cheaper at the end of the day but for right now we're using the cocoa and then i also have the zoomed moss on top and then i did leaf litter it is a bioactive uh, tank he does have um tails in there and isopods I want to say you want to be a little careful with the isopods because they might eat them at the end of the day. I still see a bunch still cruising around in there, but who knows if he has eight oranges because... Also, I do want to say when you are doing the water bowls, filling the water and misting them, to make sure that that water is always reptile safe. You just can't use plain water out of the sink that has a lot of metals, chemicals, not chemicals, but that water is just not good for them. So always make sure you treat your water before uh, using it on your reptiles or amphibians. I do have a pothos plant in there along with a bunch of cork, which he hides in like crazy. I kind of just stacked it all up. But like I said, I want to get a 40 gallon and make it a little bit higher branches for him, but he uses every square inch. The other day I couldn't find him. He blends just so well in the cork. I'll show you a video right now. Didn't even know where he was until I saw his little eyes looking at me. So these guys blend very good with the cork just because they're such that matching ground color is amazing. Okay, so let's go into the diet of these frogs. Uh, it's a lot of fun feeding them because they pretty much could eat everything. They love earthworms, crickets, mealworms, waxworms, hornworms, pretty much anything that you could buy at a reptile store these guys can get. Um, you do want to switch it up often. You don't want to be constantly giving them crickets or constantly giving them mealworms. I do want to mention that some, day, some days I will pull him out and let him um, get doobie roaches because I don't want the doobie roaches running around freely in his tank. I also will throw some crickets on there so he can hunt for them so he can get that feeling. But um, yeah, this guy eats amazing. I don't think he's ever skipped a meal. So it makes it really... Nice to have an animal that is willing to eat, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you are a beginner at all this. Um, sometimes frogs can be really sensitive and don't want to eat, but you can always count on these guys. If they're not eating, then obviously must be something wrong with them, with their health. So I also do want to give them, you know, their vitamins. They do require a D3 and also calcium. I do feed mine two to three days, uh, depending on what I got going on but yeah he doesn't eat every day but if you do have a baby chubby frog they do recommend you give them food every day all right so let's talk about the last subject and that is where you can buy these frogs i recently was at peco the other day and saw a bunch of chubby frogs there which is really surprising but um i do want to say you want to avoid peco at all costs just because a lot of those animals do come with underlying health issues and you just don't want to support that and god forbid something happens to your frog and you thought it was you not knowing that it already had some health issues so do try to avoid any of those big brand companies i personally got my guy at triple l which is just a reptile store right next to me so i really didn't have to deal with shipping or anything but online there are some really good breeders out there that are reliable that you can find um these guys usually are around 29 bucks and don't forget about shipping overnight can add up so they aren't very expensive but you know, kind of hard to find in the trade a little bit. I feel like they go 
emotions of when they come. Just make sure you purchase it from a breeder that you really trust and you've read good reviews about. All right, you guys, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you learned a little bit of information about your chubby frog and like to see my guy Buddha. But I do want to end this video saying, you know, really think about it if you really want to purchase this animal. Just don't buy it just because you think it's going to be an easy pet for your collection. These animals are really relying on you and you have to give them 100%. So just fully do your research and realize that it's something you want to be taking care of because these guys still need they're misting, they need to get fed, they need their checks on, they need their dirt to be cleaned, you know, they need a lot of love. So always make sure you uh, double think that this is what you want. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I really did love talking and sitting down and sharing a little bit about this adorable frog just because I've seen so many in the community. So yeah, if you have one, send me a picture of your chubby frog because I would love to see them. But I'm going to wrap it up at that. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. And like always, don't forget to comment below if I missed something or you think I said something wrong. Go ahead and tell me because I'm still learning too. But I do hope you guys took something from it. If you are new to my channel, like always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, I will see you in the next video.